Cool to see it lit. So today is, as people are going, youth are going, the children are going, we're beginning Advent today. I'm, I'm excited about Advent. I always like this time of year. This time of year is we prepare for the coming of Christmas. This, uh, this series under wraps, uh, it's, it, it's looking at Advent maybe just a little bit different way than I've ever looked at it before, and I, I like it. I like it. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm hoping that you're going to enjoy it with me too. The season of Advent is the four Sundays leading up to Christmas Day. This is the time when, when, whoops, starting the feedback. This is the time when the observation of Advent is a gift. It's a time to reflect, meditate, and pray, asking God to do a great work in our hearts. This is a time where we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. This is four weeks where for most of us, our life are crazy. There seems to be so much to do. There's way too much to do. There's going to be times when we're going to say, I hope it will be over with soon. But that's part of the celebration of Advent, is to find time that you can step back, step away, and not be so caught up. To find this time to reflect, to meditate and pray. And it's really going to be a time for us to find that God's going to do something, I hope, special in each one of our hearts for this Advent season. And we're going to talk about that today. The Christmas season, to me, it's just a wonderful time of year. We get to decorate all our houses, just like Betsy was talking about with the kids. We have different people come in. You know, we've already have a tree up in our house. We've got a tree up, it's been up in our house for weeks now because Laura wanted to put it up. <coughs> and so it's the peacock tree. If you've been to my house, you know that we have peacock stuff because Betsy's a peacock fan. So it's the peacock tree. So the main tree hasn't gotten up yet. We were at the Fathbrightner's house this week, some of us, for the end of the Eve study, and they have, I think, four trees up in their house. And so they have all these decorations around. And so it's just a great time of year to decorate. One of the favorite things that I do during this time of year is I like to watch the TV shows that come on. If you're it's, if you're as old as me, when they talk about, was it this year is the 50th year for the Charlie Brown Christmas? And so I'm ashamed to maybe say, or maybe it's proud that I can say, I remember the first one. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching the first one as a little kid on TV. I really like watching the Charlie Brown Christmas. In the Grinch Who Stole Christmas, I modeled my life after him. And so... You know, this is, uh, these are, are two really good shows that I really enjoy. You know, with the Charlie Brown and the Grinch, you know, it's my yearly dose watching the Grinch of how I have to live <coughs> to make sure that I can follow that standard. But I have a good time with them. I have a good time. And it's interesting, the stories that now, that, that all of our children are learning, these are wonderful stories. I'm not saying they're bad stories by any means. They're good stories. But now Shrek has got one, and the Muppets have one, and Bugs Bunny has one. Um, you know, it's just so many. There's, I heard read one person said there are like 200 children's stories on TV now if you get, you know, 400 channels. And so... You know, the, there's a lot of them, but I hope you'll have a good time watching them. And how many of y'all watched Christmas movies? Yeah, you know, you, I think most of us have a favorite Christmas movie. You know, and, and it depends on what generation you are, which movie that is. Um, and it's just interesting how that flows. You know, we all have these, these favorite things, these favorite stories that go along with Christmas. There's a story that goes along with Christmas to every Christian. And you know, the story hasn't changed. It hasn't changed in the entire time that it has been a story. And that's what I want to look at, at today is, is the story that we think 
that Christmas is, is recorded in Matthew and Luke. But you know, for the people at that time, they didn't necessarily know Christmas, but there was a story. And this story was part of what they all believed. They had believed it for so very long, and it led them to the day of Christmas. And I want to begin by looking at that first story. It's from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. It's verses six through seven, I believe. <clears throat> And we got to look, the story we know as Christmas is 2,000 years old. But the story that the people knew then was about 700 years before that, from the time of Isaiah. And so, let's look at, I'm just going to read this to you. It'll be on the screen, follow along. It says, for, for to us a child is born. Now this is 700 years before the birth of Christ. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will lead. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. He will reign on David's throne. That was the most mighty throne to be reigning, to come from at that time. And over all of David's kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the story that the people, all of the people from the Hebrew people, the people of Israel, they had known this story for 700 years. They were waiting for this Messiah to come. And this was the expectation. They waited and waited and waited. Generation after generation after generation. They waited for this Messiah to come. That was their story. They were expecting something really wonderful to happen. And it was going to happen. There wasn't any doubt about it. It was. They just didn't know when. So we come ahead 700 years. And there are two writers who record what happens in Jesus' birth. Luke tells a story that begins with a woman named Elizabeth. You'd think it would begin with a woman named Mary, but it begins with a woman named Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was a relative, was the aunt of this girl, Mary. And Elizabeth was old to the point that she was way too old to be bearing children. And she and her husband, they had been wanting children for a very, very long time. And they had really given up. And God came to them, and a miracle had happened, and she was pregnant. And so she had a part to play in this story. She didn't realize she probably had a part to play in this 700-year-old story, but she knew that a miracle had happened to her and her husband, and that she was with child. And how wonderful that was. And how blessed that she was, that something miraculous had happened to her in her life. She had been waiting, and she had been hoping, and she had been praying for a child for years and years and years, and probably had come to the point of giving up. But that child came. So that was how Luke tells the story. Matthew tells the story this way, and I'd like to read it to you. We're looking at the first chapter of Luke. We're going to verse 18, because the first 17 verses in the first chapter of Matthew is Jesus' lineage. It's going all the way back. Is the seven, well, there's three sevens in Jesus' lineage from his heritage to get him to the point that he is. That takes him all the way back to this time of Isaiah and really before that. So we begin in verse 18, and this is the words that's recorded. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, 
Before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he did not want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, all of this took place so that the word had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. So this story... There was a 700-year-old story, and people waited and waited and waited. And finally, what they waited for happened, and what they waited for came. And they waited. They prayed. They expected. They expected something a miracle, a miraculous miracle to happen. And you know, I think that's one of the things that probably, I think that we are missing, most of us in Advent, as we come to this time of expectation. We always have been taught that we need to be expecting the birth of Jesus Christ. We need to be anticipating this birth. But year after year, we just kind of think, well, yeah, it's going to happen. But what are we really expecting? Are we expecting something? Or is it just becoming... Is it just becoming so rote, such a tradition, which... I'm not saying it's a bad tradition, but do we lose what's happening? Do we lose the significance of what's happening? Do we have a sense of hope? Do we have a sense of hope attached to our Advent this year? Do we have a sense of hope? The sense of hope started 2,700 years ago, sense of hope that the Messiah was coming. Then 2,000 years ago, the Messiah came. But you know, I think God asks us and expects us and wants us to be full of hope each year. And this is the time of the year that we can find ourselves. Are we full of hope or are we not? And the question is, is what are you expecting for Christmas this year? I'm not asking you, what do you want for Christmas this year? I'm asking you, what are you expecting for Christmas this year? Are you in hopes of something that's going to happen in your life? Do you expect anything to change in your life for Christmas this year? You know, but God does. Because that's what this season of Advent is about. That's what this season of Christmas is about. It's about this hope and about the change and the expectation that the people have had for all this time. And so what is our expectation this year in Christmas? Is it going to be a different year? What is it that you need to hope for? For hundreds of, year, pe hundreds of years, people hoped for a baby to be born, for a Messiah to come, and they didn't expect it necessarily to be in the form of a baby. But is that your hope for this year? Is your hope to be living somehow different? Is your hope to be 
in a better spot? Is your hope to be that you're going to have a better job? Is your hope to be that there's just some aspect of your life that is just not being what you think God wants it to be? Is there hope this year? And can we fully expect that something is going to happen for Christmas? Or is it just going to be another year where we put up the decorations, go to all the trouble to buy stuff for everybody, and then the day after we're disappointed? Do we have expectation? Do we have hope that something is going to happen this year? Christmas happened because God expected to change the world, to give hope where there was none, to give hope where there was no hope. Is there someone in your life that you wish had a relationship with Jesus Christ? Is that what you're hoped for? Can you think of one person who needs to be in a relationship? Who, one person who needs to take that step, who needs to become closer? Is that the Christmas miracle that's going to happen for you? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but you know, if we, are, if we are not expecting a Christmas miracle, if we're not expecting that in the hope that God has placed in us for almost 3,000 years, if we don't have that hope now, we're missing what God intended for us. It's been a hope for better things all along. So what is your hope? You've got four weeks. This peace and love and hope and joy. You know, those are the four candles of Advent. Where does your hope come into that? Are you hoping for peace in your life? Or maybe joy in your life? It's two different things. You can have a lot of joy in your life, but not much peace. You can have much peace and no joy. And love. As we look at those, what is going to happen? What is it that you want for Christmas? I've been asked this. I'm asked this every year. What do you want for Christmas? And let's make a Christmas list. And, and I understand that. But you know, when it really comes down to what we want for Christmas, I would think all of you is love, peace, hope, and joy. You can't go to the store and buy those. There are things that you can do that will show them. But this is what we want in our life. And this is the Christmas miracle that can happen. And so, how is it going to be for you? I don't know. But I invite you to pray a lot about it this week and the weeks to come that lead up to Christmas to find it part of your prayer life, to find out and to be expecting. We've been expecting for thousands of years some hope of a miraculous thing to happen. And so what is it I think one of the things that I would close off this part with is that uh, kind of what, what you said, to Tom, in terms of we can all begin the fellowship the of believers, you know, when we say, okay, I'll just stay to myself, you know, how important as strategy is, how important community God. is to, to our growth, you know, to, uh, sometimes relationships, relationships can be very Christ. difficult, Maybe but sometimes that's where a lot of growth comes to. Christ. Maybe it's I don't know, but maybe I hope that you can find it, and I hope that you will know what it is. As we go through the weeks of Advent, will you pray with me, please? Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that we share. As we come to these weeks of Advent, and as we can see the light from each candle, the light of Christ that shines upon the world, that can shine into each one of our lives, let us be expectant of a miracle. Let us be expectant of how our lives can be changed, 
how we can see life possibly different, how we can maybe find that one aspect of peace or joy or love that we didn't have and greatly need. Now is the time for us to examine what that might be and to put that on our Christmas list. Not something that Walmart sells, but something that only you can bring to us and bring it to us through the people so close to us. Father, we ask that you help us to see what that is. Help us to have hope. Hope for the future. Hope for change. Hope that Jesus Christ can bring into our lives. We ask you to please hear this prayer today. Amen.